Hi everyone, sorry I'm a little bit late today. I know we normally start right at noon. Um, so if you guys are joining us and you can hear me, um, feel free to click um, a like or let me know that you're here and listening. Um, like I said, I'm a, sorry I'm a little bit late. I've been really sick for the last few days, like out in bed for like days on end. Um, and I'm rallying today just for you guys because I don't want um, you guys to miss the awesome content that we have today. So um, I'm sorry that I'm a little bit late, but as I said, I'm hoping to be, you know, as chipper as possible, even though I'm still a little bit sick um, for you guys. So today's topic is sleep safety. Um, so we're talking all about sleep safety today. Um, I'm Melissa Gerson, of course, the um, CEO and maternity nurse with years of experience in Boston hospitals. And um, I have worked as a maternity nurse for about six years. I've worked in various Boston area hospitals, and I know a ton about how to keep babies calm, all about newborn care, baby care, things like that, as well as sleep safety. Um, I'm sure it's a very serious topic for a lot of you. I'm sure it's been drilled into your heads by everyone, the doctors, the nurses at the hospital, your pediatrician, like your mom, your sister, your husband, like everyone is telling you SID, 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 SID. SIDS, which is sudden infant death syndrome. So I'm going to certainly have to talk about that today, but I'm going to kind of try to tone it down because I think you guys get that topic a ton. Um, and I am not the kind of person to judge everyone's choices. So I'm certainly going to touch on that and I'm going to talk um, about what's recommended with regards to SIDS and keeping your baby safe, but I'm not going to be like focusing on it and scare tacting you into it. So just want to keep that out there. Um, so yeah, so if you guys know anyone who has a newborn um, or you know anyone who's like super safety conscious and wants to hear a little bit more about sleep safety for babies, you know, zero to six months um, and even maybe a little bit older than that, feel free to tag them in this video because we're going to be talking about that for the next half hour or so and I'll definitely be taking questions at the end as usual. Hi, Conita. Thanks for tuning in again. We've got Maria. We've got a few other people. I'd love to hear where people are from and how old their babies are. So feel free to be commenting. So I know that when I'm answering questions at the end. Um, so first and foremost, I just want to explain a little bit about SIDS, um, which is sudden, like I said, sudden infant death syndrome. Again, you guys have probably heard all about it. And it's a diagnosis given when, unfortunately, a baby dies um, for no known reason in their sleep. It can often be referred to as crib death because it occurs oftentimes at night between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. Sometimes it is specifically ruled that the child does suffocate or have some kind of strangulation issues, um, but it is kind of an unknown cause. Um, and, you know, fortunately, the American Academy of Pediatrics and the um, National Institute of Health and a few other government organizations have done a ton of research on this topic. So we know so much more than we used to. Um, and um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to keep your baby safe at night with that. So first and foremost, basic, basic, um, you know, sleep safety is always have your baby on their back when they're sleeping and unattended. Um, so when you've got a baby and you're holding them or you've got your, either your hand on their back in their crib or their bassinet or whatever, it's totally fine for them to be sleeping and on their tummy. But the minute you, just like in a bathtub, the minute you turn your head, the minute you, you know, step away, you're not physically with them, you can't tell if they're breathing, they need to go on their backs. And that's because research, um, they're not really sure why, but the American Academy of Pediatrics found that um, that was one of the really high risk factors. Um, so the babies were sleeping on their stomachs. It might be related to, um, this is something I've heard, but I wasn't able to kind of find backup research on, um, but it might be related to the fact that especially newborns have, um, I mean, they have strong necks, but when they're sleeping and they're in a really deep sleep state um, they're kind of out of the world you know they're kind of out of it out of the world and their neck muscles aren't really as strong in those moments so if they're face down it might be easier for them to suffocate so you probably heard it a bajillion times but I'm gonna say it one more time put your baby on their back when they're sleeping unattended 
So in a crib, a bassinet, dock a tot, wherever. Again, if you're holding or touching your baby and you can tell that they're breathing, absolutely no worries. They can be on their tummy because um, I know some babies really have some gassy issues or some colic issues and that really is their preferred method of sleeping. Um, but of course, like overnight, you're going to want to put them on their back because you need to sleep. Um, so just keep that in mind. Also, side sleeping is not um, recommended, especially with babies who are swaddled and same with the stomach sleeping. Swaddled babies have more of a risk because they don't have access to their hands to kind of push up a little bit. And the same when they're on their sides, they can easily tip to their tummies and then that same risk comes into play. So keep that in mind. They they used to have the, the term back to sleep. Like I said, they drilled it into us as nurses. I think I've said that term like I don't even know. I, if I had a dollar for every time somebody, you know, I had to say that to somebody, I'd probably be a millionaire and I wouldn't be talking to you guys today. So, um, yeah, so that's one really important thing um, to keep in mind is always have your babies on their backs. Um, when it comes to cribs, you want to make sure that you're using an up-to-date crib or an up-to-date bassinet. Again, there's been a lot of research recently um, that is coming out that older cribs, especially like, you know, from the early 90s and 80s, I'm sure none of you are using those. Those would be like the cribs you slept in, um, but really don't use them. They used to have like drop down sides and that would be easier so mom and dad could get baby out of the crib, especially if you're short. I've heard from a lot of moms who are short, like 5'1", five, 5'2", five, who have a really difficult time reaching over and into the crib to pick up their baby. So those drop down cribs were great because it allowed parents to kind of pick up their baby easier. They could drop down the side and just pick up the baby. Unfortunately, there were some issues with those mechanisms and baby could activate it or it would malfunction and then the side would come down and it could trap baby in, you know, in like a, a situation where they could suffocate. So that was, you know, not a good situation. So they're really recommending using up-to-date cribs. So if your sister had a baby a year ago and she's donating her crib to you, maybe not a year, maybe like two or three years ago, she's donating her crib to you, just double check with the brand and the type of crib and double check that it's got all the safety um, features that it needs. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is really on top of all this stuff. So cribs that have the proper certification should be easy to look up and you can totally use hand-me-downs, but I would not use like antique hand-me-downs. Anything with a drop-down side would be a no-go for me. Again, new bassinets, like older bassinets can be great, but new bassinets have a lot of great features. They have mattresses that can be breathable. Um, um, they have um, sides that are made of mesh, so there's no way that the baby can kind of suffocate against the side. Um, so they've got a, a lot of really great features in these new bassinets. Um, some of them even vibrate, which can be great. Um, and so, yeah, so we're going to be talking a little bit about, um, we're going to be talking, you know, we're going to, I would recommend using those um, instead of, you know, something that you slept in when you were a kid. Um, so I just want to take a moment. Um, thank you, Lizzie, for tuning in from Washington State. And then Tonka is asking if we're going to see the product. Yes, um, I want to get through a few topics on safe sleep, and then I will definitely show you the product. Um, and I will do a little, just for you, Tonka, I will do a little kind of demo of how the product works um, and how you can use it in a safe way with your baby for sleep. So um, just stay tuned. I will definitely get to that maybe in like 15 minutes. Um, so please bear with me, but I want to get through the content I've got planned for today. Um, and I see some other questions coming in and I will be answering those towards the end. So please, please, please stay tuned. I see some great questions already coming in. So thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to share with friends um, if you think they have any questions or issues about sleep safety. Um, the other thing when it comes um, to SIDS is you want to make sure that your baby um, is got their crib or their bassinet doesn't have extra blankets. There's no crib bumpers. There's not like no. Um, uh, stuffed animals in the crib, things like that. They look cute. They look sweet. They might even be at the baby's feet. You're like, oh, it's not a big deal. The baby's so tiny. They're at the head. It's like three feet away. There's no issue. But the um, AAP really, really does not recommend anything in a sleep setting. Um, the only thing that babies should be sleeping with, so all babies, one of the other things we want to watch for with babies when they're sleeping, because being overheated can actually increase the risk of SIDS. 
So we want to make sure baby is properly, you know, heated. And we don't want them to get colds at night and things like that, but we don't want to use a sheet either. No pillows, no sheets, none of that. So how do we keep baby warm, um, but not overheated and thus increase our risk of SIDS? So one of the things that I say, it's a super simple, easy rule of thumb, is to put one extra layer on baby than what you feel comfortable with based on the room's temperature. So if it's like the dead of summer and you don't have air conditioning and it's like 90 degrees in your apartment and you want to be naked under the, like a cold shower, you probably want to put baby in a diaper and then you might want to, you know, put a fan in the room to get some circulation. And then that extra layer can always be a swaddle. Um, swaddles are great, just especially if it's the summer, use a really lightweight one or if you're in a hot climate. Um, if you're in a space where you've got air conditioning or it's winter time and it's a little bit colder and you wish that you could, you know, maybe be in a long sleeve shirt like I'm wearing today, or you wish you could be in a long sleeve shirt and a sweater and pants and some, you know, wool socks, then you'd want to put baby in something like that and then add another swaddle blanket on top. That's their extra layer. That's their sheet. So keep that in mind. You can use either regular swaddle blankets or you can use, um, you can definitely use those kind of the easier versions, I don't know what to call them. I don't use them very often because I'm so adept at using the swaddle blanket and I think they're cheaper and easier and, and more versatile for me. But you know, like they have those just like kind of Velcro sides that get the arms tight. Um, we did an entire live on swaddles, so I'm not gonna go into any more detail about that, but you should definitely check it out. We'll post the link um, after the video is up and live. So keep that in mind that you can check that out. Um, one thing with swaddles, you wanna have a tight, tight swaddle because if that swaddle comes loose, during the night, you could end up having that blanket loose and then you've increased your SIDS hazard. So if you're using one of those wraps with a Velcro, great, baby's not gonna get out of it. If you're just gonna use a blanket, make sure that the arm section is really tight. You wanna leave about two fingers worth of breathing space between the baby and the blanket. So swaddle as tight as you think is possible and then just double check. And if there's at least two fingers, if there's like five, it's probably too loose and you wanna redo. But if there's two, maybe three, baby is fine and safe and can sleep well. Keep the leg legs um, and the legs and hip area pretty open or loose, that's okay if that comes undone. Or, or is much looser and it's actually safer for baby's hips um, so they don't get any kind of issues with like hip dysplasia. So keep that in mind. That's all covered in our other video. We also have a blog post about it. So definitely check that out. I did an entire video with several different ways to swaddle your baby um, and how to wean your baby off the swaddle and all that stuff. So, um, and a lot of companies for older babies um, who want to sleep if, you, if they're out of the swaddle and they're kind of already rolling over on their own, but you want to still add that extra layer, you can use sleep sacks. Those are really great. A lot of companies make those. One of my favorites. I probably mention them a lot, but I do love them. I know the owner and she's just the sweetest woman ever um, is the nested bean Zen um, swaddle and sleep sack. And they have this little like weighted section that goes right on the baby's chest. So it almost feels like mom's hand. So love that product as well. And they make it for older babes. So it's really great. Um, so definitely want to um, let you guys know all about that. Um, so one of the other things, it doesn't necessarily um, keep baby safe with sleep, but I'm a big fan of um, skin to skin. And skin to skin is really great um, just for the overall health, especially of newborns. So if you're still pregnant, um, you've got a brand new baby, just try to do some skin to skin during the, night, the day, maybe during baby's nap time, um, you know, while you wanna scroll Facebook for an hour or two or whatever, and put baby skin to skin. It's just got a lot of great benefits. Um, it kind of regulates their heart rate, their breathing, their body temperature because your body changes. Um, and it's just great for baby's overall health and can ultimately have a nice healthy baby which can reduce, um, you know, reduce any sleep issues and possibly even reduce SIDS. But there's no evidence that that necessarily reduces SIDS. I want to be clear about that, but I'm a big proponent of it. So if you've got a new baby out there, maybe under about a month, definitely do as much skin to skin as possible. Um, one of the other things that's actually really cool and super easy for parents to do is room share. I'm sure a ton of you are probably already doing it, especially if you're using a bassinet um, or a co-sleeper, you've got the crib in the room. It's just the AAP actually recommends this, especially for babies under six months, because it actually reduces the SIDS risk by 50%. Us mamas are super smart. We are light sleepers. We don't think we are, like we're getting a good night's sleep, but like you'd be, so, I'm sure you guys have probably already noticed it. Like all of a sudden you wake up in the middle of the night, you're like, I gotta check on the baby. And you go in the room and you're like, oh, 
you know, he's rolled over in his sleep or this has happened and you just know somehow instinctively. So if you're in, if the baby's in the room and they're kind of stirring or something seems off, like somehow you just know and it's a great, great way to kind of reduce the SIDS risk because you'll, um, you, you don't think you're being a light sleeper, but you really are and you've always got like kind of in the back of your mind, like watch out for this kiddo that's in the room and keep them safe. So um, it's a really great way to reduce that risk and it also makes it really easy if you're breastfeeding in the middle of the night just to get up, you know, go over to a cross the room, pick them up from their crib or from the bassinet. Um, one of the things when it comes to um, if you're co-sleeping, again, I have zero judgment on that. And we'll talk a little bit about um, some co-sleeping benefits as well as obviously some risks with that. The AAP does not recommend co-sleeping because of increased risk of SIDS, but I will talk about some pros and cons of that. And I want you guys to know um, that I don't make a decision either way, but you guys want to really look into the pros and cons of both and make the decision that works best for your family. My lawyers would kill me if I made a decision either way, but there's no judgment for me about co-sleeping, um, but the AAP does not recommend it because they believe that it increased the risk of SIDS. So just putting that out there, there are some co-sleepers out there, there's some great bassinets where baby has their own space, um, and that's especially true for babies under three months um, to about six months. So just keep that in mind. Um, but but co-rooming or room sharing is a great, great idea and concept. Um, so when it comes to breastfeeding at night or you're getting up with like a, you know, your baby's a newborn or even like a month or two old and they're, um, getting, you know, you're feeding them or whatnot and you're a little bit sleepy, you want to make sure that you are, um, getting, um, you're not, you're like, if you're super sleepy, you want to make sure you're upright and in kind of an uncomfortable position because breastfeeding will make you sleepy. It's the middle of the night. The room might be dark. You want to keep the room dark so baby can fall asleep easier, things like that. Um, but you don't want to get into a situation where your baby um, is, you know, like where you're so sleepy that you fall asleep with your baby and you're in one of those super nice armchairs or like a couch and then you're putting your baby in this really horrible SIDS hazard. So a lot of places will recommend like sitting up with baby in bed instead of maybe like laying in, laying with them in bed, things like that. Um, so keep that in mind when it comes to sleep safety. Um, you know, that it's probably best to be in kind of like a more upright position so you're not gonna fall asleep with baby and put them in, in an additional hazard. Um, so keep that in mind. Pacifiers are another great way for some reason, we don't really know why, that they actually improve a baby's chances of um, like having a reduced SIDS risk. So um, if you, we did a whole section on pacifiers as well so it was our sucking video um, we'll post the link shortly as well about that we did an entire video and a blog post about it um, and I talked a lot about like maybe your baby doesn't currently take a pacifier or you're breastfeeding and you want to avoid using a pacifier right away so we talk about those pros and cons and I kind of give you tips and tricks to get baby to take their pacifier um, and use it through the night um, but it's a great way to kind of keep baby um, from getting into like a super sleep uh, deep sleep cycle it kind of wakes them up a little bit and it will prevent them from having any breathing issues issues or difficulties. Um, one of the other things for a great sleep routine to get your baby to sleep really easily and really well, and that's one of the things I think is super important for sleep safety, is to have a routine in place, is to talk about, um, you know, maybe getting your baby to have a bath or a nice little massage towards the end of the evening, then a short play session in a dimmed lit room, um, maybe in their room or your room because you're room sharing, and then, you know, maybe a, a, like a warm massage with like your warm hands or some warm lotion um, and getting baby kind of ready for bed but then having a little play session so they're not like super out of it maybe a little breastfeeding and then going to put them down you don't want to put a sleeping baby down I would actually wake baby just a little bit so that they learn that being in their crib like oh I'm drowsy I can fall asleep here this is fine you don't want to get into a situation like imagine if you fought, took a nap on the couch and then all of a sudden you woke up in your bed like even if you were just groggy and you kind of open your eyes a little bit you'd be freaked out that you weren't in the same place that can happen to babies as well so you actually want to put them down still a little bit groggy so they know where they are um, and then they finish falling asleep in their crib that'll be a great um, help for you so that babies associating crib with sleep time and they can self like soothe themselves to sleep so that's a great tip um, and you can use a little bit of heat to help your baby fall asleep as well so that's why I'm recommending like a warm bath or a nice warm massage with some like little bit of warm lotion always test the water or test any lotions that you're using if you're 
you're using any kind of like uh, sock filled with rice um, that you've heated up in the microwave, just test it always like on your inner wrist so that you know it's safe for baby. Um, but those can be really great ways to kind of get baby nice and groggy and ready for bed. And it's a great way to have a routine. So baby associates all these things with like, oh good, it's time to go to bed now, or it's almost time to go to bed. And they can get ready to really wind down. Um, so that's awesome and just a really great tip that I love using. So that's kind of all that I have for you guys today. Um, we'll have a follow-up blog with this video. It's going to be a little bit delayed. As I mentioned, I was sick this whole week, so I've been doing my best as I can, like in between my like sleeping all day and naps and doctor's trips um, to try to get this blog together. So it might actually come out tomorrow, um, but it will be out there. We'll have a lot of information that I'm talking about today um, and follow-ups, and we're going to provide all the links to everything. So now it's time for q and A. I I see that a ton of people already asked questions, so I'm going to kind of go back through um, as people asked. Um all right, so let's see. We um, so Linda had a question, but it was already answered by our social media manager. Thank you so much. Um, Linda was just asking, like, you know, if they if they have any feedback on the experience of the product, and we have tons of reviews on our website as well as our Amazon site. So if you have any questions about that, um, Tonka wanted to see the product. I will get to that in just a second. Um, Alyssa Page um, said, "Is it safe for my baby to sleep in his rock and play?" It is until he hits about five or six months, and then he's out it. Um, the other thing with the rock and play is they get used to that nice, snug, secure feeling. So you're going to want to make sure you can swaddle your baby um, as well, um, at, you know, so that you can transition them into something else. So they can sleep through the night in the rock and play, but they might get dependent on those vibrations. And actually, that's where the tranquilo mat can be super perfect. We've had a ton of parents of actually kids six months and up. This is our smaller size. Um, I can grab the larger size in just a minute, um, but the larger size would probably be better for older babies um, but the larger size is great for actually getting babies to fall asleep um, in their crib because they're used to the vibrations of their bassinet or their rock and play then they hit about five or six months and you want to try to put them in their crib because they've outgrown those two and unfortunately they're like this doesn't vibrate it has no sounds associated with like the rock and play I'm not sleeping here I'm gonna stay up all night and I'm gonna keep you up with me so Alyssa um, yes your baby can sleep in the rock and play but you might want to think about transitioning or finding a way to transition them and try and Kilomat is actually perfect for that. So now, because that was your question and it ties perfectly into, um, into Tonka's, uh, Tonka, Tonka's, I think I'm saying that right, um, question. I'm just going to demo the product really quickly. So you press and hold to turn it on. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's got some vibrations. I've kind of put it off to the side. There's an M button that you can then press to change the modes. So there's some other modes there. I don't know if you can hear this, but click a like if you can. And then this is high. And then we have two heartbeat features that are this very cyclical, almost like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So, um, and we've got two of those. And then we also have an auto off feature. So I just turned it on, like I waited about five seconds for the product to turn on. Um, but if you continue to hold after the vibrations come on, it actually activates an auto off. So if you've got a kiddo sleeping in a rock and play and they love their vibrations, but you wanna get them into a crib, our large size can be perfect for that because it's gonna recreate those vibrations and the sound that they were experiencing. They're gonna love it. And you can start maybe on high because your baby's a bigger, you know, bigger, like five, Five, six months at this point and then you can wean them down to maybe medium and then low and then maybe you can put it under the mattress or you can use that auto off feature so you're just kind of weaning your baby off those vibrations slowly so you're not getting into a situation where your kid is like you and your kid are sleepless for like a week or two while they're like fighting not no longer being able to sleep in their rock and play and you don't want to let them sleep there because it's unsafe um, so um, I'm gonna go get the large mat as well um, just to show you guys the size difference um, and then I'm going to take a few more questions. Um, so actually Alyssa asked, um, how do we get baby to sleep anywhere besides like their co-sleeper or in a rock and play? Um, and I kind of just answered that, that the tranquilo mat is actually perfect for that. Um, I hope you guys could hear that. I was saying that Alyssa asked how um, babies can go from bed bedside co-sleeper to the crib. Perfect question. That was also by Alyssa. Um, and I was just explaining that with the large, with the large mat. It's a perfect product for that. So again, this is the small mat I'm kind of maybe like pushing pushing my camera away a little bit so small mat this is the large mat so it's much bigger and this is the small mat on top of the large mat so small mat 
large mat. And babies, I would not recommend letting babies sleep with a small mat um, just because they don't fit very well. So this fake doll that I use in all my videos. I think we should name him or her. Um, do we give him a real name? Do we give him a fake name? Love to hear some suggestions. Um, he appears almost in it. He or she appears in almost every video. But if you can see, they don't really fit great um, on the small mat. It's a little bit dangerous and it's much easier for them to roll off. You could certainly use this for swaddling your baby with that. Um, so you could put them in a swaddle blanket and include this in with the swaddle blanket. That would be fine. Or this one is great for car seats and basset, uh, car seats and and um, strollers as well as baby carriers. In a car seat, you always want to make sure baby's strapped in and then put this on top. Um, you don't want this to be in between the straps and the baby because the straps are what are keeping baby safe. But the large size, as you can see, baby fits much better. So they've still got a little bit of room. This large mat fits. I mean, I've had a two-year-old on this and her legs hang off and she loved it. So um, the large mat is one of our best sellers for that reason. And that's a great way to get your baby from... Um, sleeping in the rock and play or bedside co-sleeper that might vibrate into their crib. So great question. Thanks for asking, Alyssa. Um, all right. So Melissa Wilson asked, what age is it safe to start co-sleeping? So again, um, I'm not going to be a proponent one way or the other when it comes to co-sleeping. But um, what I will say is that most people who do co-sleep really don't recommend it unless you have like a special co-sleeper, a, a, a side bassinet, up until about three months of age, sometimes even upwards of six. Um, Certainly co-sleeping can be great because it makes it easier for breastfeeding. It's just a little bit easier to roll over breastfeed and then put baby back to sleep. It decreases their crying. It can create a stronger bond. Um, there's a lot of really great um, you know, benefits to it. And there's several cultures who've been doing it for years and years and they're not going to stop. Um, and they're proponents of it. So you know, I just want everyone to be aware of the risks and benefits. Again, the AAP does not recommend it um, specifically until a kid's a year. But at that point, um, you know, most parents might not want to do it. It. Um, you know, if you've got a toddler that's sleeping with you, it's great because it can help with any anxious kids or any kind of behavioral issues. Um, and you might want to consider stopping co-sleeping around two years of age. But of course, like every family is going to be different. So, um, you know, if you do really, really want to co-sleep, consider just investing in a, um, one of the bassinets for a few months um, and then maybe switching over to co-sleeping or a nice co-sleeper. Maybe I know I've heard of tons of parents who are using DACA tots. Um, and when you do co-sleep with a baby, unfortunately, you should be without a pillow and you don't get a blanket either so um, keep that in mind if you're co-sleeping so that's why it can often be just a little bit easier um, for babies to um, just have their own little bassinet on the side or something like that because you probably want your own blanket and they don't make swaddles big enough for us so um, just keep that in mind if you're thinking to co-sleep once your kids um, you know six months to a year it's usually a lot easier and safer they've got um, a lot more muscle control and head control but certainly SIDS is still a risk for kids um, under a year so do keep that in mind um, so Alyssa's asking, is it safe to use those soft fleece type crib sheets in the winter? Yes, of course. Just make sure that the crib sheets are tight. You want to make sure that any of your crib sheets are tight and, um, you know, just they, they're not any gaps or bubbles or like extra fabric hanging around. Um, but all crib sheets that are manufactured and sold in the USA have to meet certain standards. So it should be totally fine to use those fleece crib sheets. Um, just keep that in mind because that might uh, just keep in mind that that might actually keep your kid a little bit hotter. So you want to be a little bit more um, conscious of over heating. Um, you know if a baby is overheated, if their ears are red, or if they're sweating. Um, you guys can't see this, but since I've been sick, I am sweating bullets right now. Um, but if a baby is ever sweating, that is not good. Babies, like, sweating is kind of like a last resort. They're not like adults that use it just to cool off. Um, it's like this, like, desperation effect for babies. So if anytime a baby's sweating, they're always overheated. Back of the neck or their ears, um, if they're red or really hot, they're overheated. So just keep that in mind if you're going to use the fleece crib sheets um, and kind of plan accordingly with your layering um, for baby. So we also have a question. Once baby starts rolling on their own, do I still need to place them on their back to sleep? And if so, how much longer should we be doing that? So that's a great question, Maria. And actually, I did forget to mention this. So all babies under a year should be placed on their backs. However, once you've got a baby who's oh, like who during the day is like rolling over and rolling back over and they're just having a ball, like rolling all over the place and kind of moving for moving around the room by just rolling and rolling and rolling. Um, if you put them on their backs while they're sleeping, if, so first off, if they're rolling, you should have 
have them out of their swaddle, definitely check out our swaddle video because um, it has a lot of information about how to wean them off of a swaddle. Um, but if you've got a kiddo that's rolling during the day and you put them down on their back and then you wake up at night, again, you don't want them to be swaddled, but you wake, you know, wake up in the night and you find them on their stomachs, totally fine. You do not, contrary to popular belief, need to turn them back onto their backs. They are going to be fine in that position, but I would always try to place them on their backs. And if they roll at night and they're, you know, of the age where during the day, they're already rolling back and forth on their own, that's fine. If you've got a younger kiddo and you're, you know, and they're not rolling during the day yet and you come to find them rolled over, I would turn them back over, especially if they're swaddled because that is really dangerous. Um, and don't ask me how they do it. I don't think any of us know they're like little Houdinis. So um, you should almost always put your baby on their back for the first year. You know, if they roll during their sleep, it's going to be fine if they're, you know, developmentally able to do that while awake. It's just like they're practicing in their sleep and it might be their preferred sleep position. I'm not a stomach sleeper. I hate it, but I'm, I love sleeping on my side. So, um, you know, it's kind of the same thing with babies and they kind of develop that preference. So it's totally okay if, if you find an older baby sleeping in a different position, um, but you don't, and you don't need to turn them over. Um, since so it's possible to swaddle too loosely and also too tight around the legs, I don't want to swaddle at all. Is it okay not to swaddle my baby at all? So I would, if you're really worried about how you're swaddling, I would definitely check out our video, check out our blog, really try to hone that craft or just buy one of those other swaddle um, devices. Again, you're only really swaddling for zero to four months and swaddles can be great. They actually help babies sleep longer. So you probably want to swaddle your baby or find a product that helps you swaddle them easily just so you're, there's some really great ones out there. There's one that only it's like a band that only swaddles their arms and like leaves their legs free. That's great. Um, there's others that are almost like sleep sacks with little Velcro arms, super easy to do. Um, and it's going to get your baby at least another hour, sometimes two to four more hours if you're swaddling them. So like, why wouldn't you? Um, but I would really just try to really hone in on that practice. Um, and it's only for a few months that you're going to be using it, but it will really help you get some good sleep during that time. So I would definitely recommend it. Um, so thanks for asking. All right, Konita, um, how do I know if my baby has too many layers? I don't like long sleeves and I, um, I sleep in tank tops and I usually am a bit cool, but I use a blanket at night. So yeah, so I would just kind of run off what you're using. So if you're comfortable, um, you know, in let's say a tank top in the room, maybe you want to use a short sleeve with your kiddo, um, but just add that extra layer. So whatever you're comfortable in, add an extra layer. And again, check the ears, check the back of the neck. Baby should never be sweating. Um, and their blanket is their swaddle or their sleep sack or whatever, you know, other kind of like simple swaddle device that you're using or what have you. So just no blanket. Um, but whatever you're wearing, plus an extra layer, your kid should be fine. And just if you're worried, check the back of their neck right as they kind of fall asleep. Um, um, and then maybe again, if you wake up in the night or right after they wake up to maybe feed in the middle of the night. And if their their ears aren't red or the back of their neck isn't red, they should be fine. If you do find that, just take off a layer and put them back with that swaddle blanket and they should be good. Um, although if I'm remembering co correctly, Konita, your son's about three months. Um, so he, um, he might kind of be moving out of the swaddle anyway soon. Um, so I would definitely look into getting those sleep sacks. They're pretty awesome um, and can be really helpful. Um, it leaves their arms out, but it does provide that extra layer. It's almost like wearing a vest in the fall. Um, so Alyssa is asking, how soon can I switch my baby from the co-sleeper to a crib? You can do that at any time, actually, Alyssa, um, but they need to kind of be out of those co-sleepers around um, like five to six months, especially if they've outgrown it. You can tell they have kind of weight restrictions that get a little wobbly. Um, it's just really not safe. So I would check whatever device you're using. Um, if you'd like to leave the information about the device, I'd be happy to look it up for you and follow up later. Um, but, you know, certainly just, um, you know, like look into that device and let us, you know, either let us know or look into it, um, but they should have kind of age or weight, weight limits on it. So once your baby hits that, they have to be out of it and they really need to be in a crib, but you can start a, a kid in a crib. Let's say they're a week old and you want to transition them. You can do that. Totally fine. Um, Konita asked again, can baby sleep overnight in a baby swing? Yes, that's very similar to Alyssa's question. They totally can. Newborns, the swing should be all the way back fully reclined. Um, and then as the baby gets older, it can kind of be more and more upright. But again, once a kid hits five to six months, they're sitting up on their own. Um, you'll even be able to see during the day that they're able to set themselves up and kind of pull on the chair. That becomes super unsafe and they could end up face planting. Um, and like having the chairs weight on top of them, it's just really unsafe. So um, yes, they can sleep over night in a baby swing but same answer for Alyssa that you really do want to transition your kiddo out of that around five to six months um, and that's where that tranquilo mat comes into play so keep that in mind um, let's see 
I have one more question from Alyssa. Thanks for st sticking with me here. Um, my baby's almost three months and is sleeping all night. Um, should I wake him to let him eat? Um, no, if your kid's sleeping through the night, enjoy it. Like celebrate, go have some wine and just enjoy it. Three month old kiddos don't necessarily need to sleep through the night, um, especially if you're breastfeeding and you know, your pediatrician isn't saying he's, he's not gaining weight or having any issues. Like there is no need to wake him to eat. Like let him guide you and enjoy the sleep. I'm sure there are tons of moms out there who would love to have a three month old who's sleeping through the night. So just enjoy it. Do not wake him. Um, again, if your pediatrician is saying like he's having difficulty maintaining his weight or he's having, um, you know, other issues, like he's on the really low section of the percentile or things like that, maybe you would want to wake him to eat. But otherwise, like just, I would just forget it and enjoy it. So, um, yeah, see, Conita's like, yeah, enjoy it. Um, a lot of moms out there would, would totally agree with, with Conita and me that you just enjoy that. Let him sleep. Um, yeah, so Alyssa, your baby's fine. Let him sleep. He's getting all the calorie needs during the day, and you can enjoy those, you know, those eight or ten or however many hours he's getting. So you're doing a great job, and don't worry about it. Um, are there any other questions out there, guys? Again, you cannot see it, but I am like sweating bullets. <laughs> I've had like fever chills for a few days. I have the air conditioning on in my house, but I think it's one of those hot summer Boston days and I'm just like, Ugh. I'm like dying over here. <laughs> I'm like shiny. Um, so the mat is, the large size is $99 um, and the small size is... 85 um, we are actually this entire month is a sleep month so we're doing entire sleep theme and we actually are offering a discount I believe and I hope that our social media manager is watching and can comment because I'm hoping I say this right you can use the discount sleep 10 um, to get 10% off which is about $10 for the large mat so um, it'll be 10% off on the small so it's a little bit you know it's not quite $10 um, but you can end up getting it for about $90 instead of 99 it's like $89.99 instead of $99.99 so um, so yeah so it's a great and it's a great product because it's gonna get your kiddo transitioned really well um, one of the things that I I would like to mention depending on how people are using um, how you know strict they are about um, SIDS and how worried they are about their kiddo um, so um, actually this is a great time we just had somebody ask what makes my baby more prone to SIDS than others so if you've got a kid who's more prone to SIDS you've got you had a baby who was underweight who's still underweight who was a preemie who had a who had a brother or sister die of SIDS um, if you were a teen pregnancy if you didn't get prenatal care you know um, if you smoke if somebody smokes in the household um, all of these things are kind of um, risk factors that um, the baby can't and you can't can't change because they're kind of um, medical and historical um, things so there's nothing you can do to change that but those make those kids um, more prone to SIDS those kiddos you're gonna want to be much more cautious of SIDS but if you're like let's say you're already co-sleeping or using a co-sleeper um, or your kids older and you're not as worried about SIDS um, you can definitely use the kid directly on top of the mat um, so you can put the crib sheet on put the mat in put the baby on top if you want to be a bit more strict you can put the mat right under to turn it on set it to the mode you want put it under that top sheet you can usually feel the buttons it's pretty obvious where those buttons are can be easy excuse me easily adjusted under that crib sheet so that's another great like safety um, space and situation you know just to keep kind of safe from SIDS if you're gonna be really strict to those guidelines and then if you want to be like super safe you've got a high-risk kiddo um, you've got a kid like under three months who can't roll over during the day but you keep finding them rolled over at night I would definitely put the product under um, the mattress because that's gonna be your safest bet the vibrations especially on high will still reverberate through the entire mattress and it'll get them some nice soothing um, but you're gonna like there's not gonna be anything that's making it lumpy or extra in the crib that could be a SIDS hazard so just keep that in mind um, on how you want to use the product again I don't make any judgments um, but certainly like the AAP would probably recommend putting it under the mattress um, because that would be the safest from a SIDS perspective um, but every family is different so know your pros and cons and keep that in mind um, so yeah the again the code is sleep 10 you can use that at checkout for 10% off. Again, this entire month is sleep safety. Um, so next week, we are going to be talking about, uh, hold on, I'm going to double check on that. Um, I should know this, but like I said, I've been a little delirious. Oh, um, we're gonna be talking about how to get baby to fall asleep and stay asleep. So that's gonna be our topic for next week. I will be hosting and I will be discussing. Um, but then the next two weeks, we're gonna have guests. So we're gonna have some sleep consultants, um, doulas, I'm not exactly sure who's on the docket, but I'll 
I'll definitely mention who's next. Um, I believe the third week, so not next week, but the following is going to be um, Boston Baby Nurse um, and a friend of mine, Carol, um, who's a sleep consultant as well as a nurse. And um, yeah, so it's going to be a great episode and we're going to have a lot of talk about sleep. So tune in because everyone needs sleep. Um, don't forget to share with your friends um, because we want to get you as much sleep as possible because yeah, not sleeping sucks. Trust me, I'd know. Um, thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. You're very welcome, Linda. I'm happy that I that you were able to tune in. Um, and again, if anyone has any additional questions, don't forget to just PM us on our page, and we would be very happy to answer any additional questions or issues for you. So um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I think that's going to be it for today. We love having you, and we'll be back next week, noon, Thursdays, Eastern Standard Time. We will be um, having another... Um, uh, you know, talk and we'll answer all your questions about how to get baby to fall asleep and stay asleep. So thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.